an independent person in a country not known for its willingness to accept nonconformists, those that do not cooperate with customs, Soichiro Honda created an automobile giant despite the opposition of the Japanese government. Honda is one of the biggest automobile manufacturing companies in the world, and the story of Honda founder Soichiro Honda is really very inspiring. So today we will tell you the story of how a poor Japanese boy created Honda. 6. Early Life The first son of blacksmith Gihei Honda and his wife Mika, Soichiro Honda was born on November 17, 1906 in rural Iwadagun, Japan. In 1922, he graduated from the Futamata Senior Elementary School. Honda had a little tolerance for formal education and jumped at every opportunity he had to work with his true love, motors. During Honda's early childhood, bicycles were starting to become very popular in Japan. More and more customers were beginning to ask his father to repair their machines and, sensing an opportunity, he decided to open a repair shop of his own. Using his blacksmithing skills and willingness to learn, he quickly grasped the basics repairing secondhand bicycles and reselling them at competitive prices. From this moment, his business began to be seen as the best bicycle store in the neighborhood. Much of his childhood was spent helping his father with his bicycle repair business. Honda had little interest in traditional education. His school would often hand out school grading reports to children to show their parents. These were to be returned to the school with a family seal to prove that the child's parents had indeed reviewed the document. So Ichiro Honda, showing a spark of his future self, created a stamp to forge his family seal out of a used rubber bicycle pedal cover. He soon provided the same service for his classmates, diligently forging their family seals. Throughout his life, Honda never forgot the impression that was made on him when he sighted his first automobile. After leaving school, Honda began his career as an apprentice, a person who works to gain experience in a trade, auto repairman for Arto Shokai in Tokyo. In 1928, he returned to his hometown as a master mechanic and soon established a branch shop for the firm in Hamamatsu, Japan. As a teenager, Honda worked as an apprentice under one Yuzo Sakakibara, who taught him a great deal about automobile and motorcycle engineering as well as running a business. His tutelage under Yuzo would be foundational to the future man Honda would become. This was a highly influential time for Soichiro, where he would learn a great deal about many different kinds of motor vehicles. He would soon put this experience to great use when he strove out to build his business. Honda had some unique quality in him which usually people don't have, and that quality was a reason behind his and his company's success. His motorbike company is the biggest company in the world from 1959 till now, which is made by the world's most combustion engines. His company's motorbikes still win many motorbike races, which were his dream too. Not only this, apart from cars and bikes, Honda also manufactures marine engines, watercraft, generators, garden equipment, and even aerospace parts. The success of the company goes to Soichiro directly or indirectly, and to his qualities. 5. Building an Empire during this time, Honda also participated in auto races and became interested in cars and motorcycles. Soon he was experimenting with engines, and in 1928 he organized the Tohai Seiki Company to manufacture piston rings, some of which were sold to Toyota, a major Japanese car manufacturer. Honda's first attempts at the personal motor business came in the mid-1940s when he designed and manufactured a small engine that could be attached to a bicycle to create a motorbike. The venture proved a great success. Encouraged by his early success, in 1948 he organized the Honda Motor Company. The following year, Honda manufactured a small motor motorcycle called the Dream D and prepared to enter the highly competitive Japanese market, which he did through effective advertising. Within a decade, Honda was the leading motorcycle manufacturer in the world and had a larger share of the American motorcycle market than Toyota and Nissan, with its Datsun cars, had in automobiles. Now, Soichiro Honda attracted press attention, and unlike most Japanese businessmen, he loved it. A small but talkative man, he was the opposite of what Westerners imagine Japanese businessmen to be. For example, he promoted executives on the basis of performance rather than age, an unusual practice at large Japanese firms. Honda continued racing autos and motorcycles, dressed casually, and took pride in maintaining his independence from the Japanese business establishment. In addition, Honda openly voiced his admiration of American business practices and way of life. 
Although this new company hit a few technical issues initially, Honda would improve his knowledge of metallurgy at university, allowing him to produce quality parts for his customers. World War II would see his factory bombed out and an earthquake the following year would finally put an end to his first venture. Selling what remained of it to Toyota, Honda would use the proceeds to found Honda and make some of the world's most famous motorcycles. The company would grow from strength to strength to become one of the world's best-known automobile brands in the world. We have consistently chosen a most difficult path filled with hardships. We must possess the will to challenge difficulties and the wisdom to create new values without being bound by established standards. We do not wish to imitate others. Soichiro Honda, Founder 4. Automobiles This was at a time when the powerful Ministry of Trade and Industry MITI, was trying to unite several small companies into a third large one to compete with Toyota and Nissan. MITI and the Department of Transportation tried to discourage Honda from adding to the number of companies, but he persisted. He won MITI's permission by coming out with a low-priced small sports car, the S500, which was different from anything produced by the other companies. He followed it up with other sports models. His company was still very small, producing only 3,000 cars in 1966, half of what Toyota was turning out in a week. Honda introduced the Civic to the American market in 1972. It got 39 miles per gallon MPG on the road and 27 miles per gallon in city driving, remarkably efficient for an automobile. The popularity of the Civic rose throughout the 1970s, and in 1980, Honda sold 375,000 cars in the American market, almost three times as many as Subaru and twice as many as Mazda, but still behind Toyota and Nissan. The reasons for this success were obvious. Honda combined high quality with efficiency and economy, but his small cars still appealed to a limited market. 3. Ramshackle of Honda and Rise of Honda Motors the dreams of Soichiro were paused due to World War II. In 1995 was the black year for Honda as the company faced a huge loss. Every employee of the company was shattered, but not Soichiro. Although he had no choice than selling remaining to Toyota, a backup plan was there in place. He bought a tank of alcohol and served the homemade whiskey to everyone. In 1946, Honda started selling motorcycles and mopeds in his new company that he named Honda Technology Research Institute. In a short time, the company became the largest motorcycle selling firm. Honda was in the headlines because of his unique way of dealing with business concerns. He promoted the employees based on the industrial knowledge and performance rather than the age. In fact, the entire media was shocked when he stated that he won't air the business to his children. These unique ways of thinking led him to be the winner of highly competitive automotive company owner in 1970. In the commencement of the 80s, Honda was the third widest producer of cars in Japan. It has been almost 65 years that Honda has been producing the most efficient cars and tests every model personally. 2. Transforming Honda in the late 1970s and early 1980s, Honda expanded its car company overseas. In 1979, he opened a motorcycle plant near Columbus, Ohio, and an auto plant followed soon after, prompting other Japanese companies to follow his lead. In the late 1970s, Toyota and Nissan sold one-third of their cars to the United States, while Honda sold half of his in that market. Soichiro Honda did not directly supervise these introductions or the development of overseas plants in the United States and Europe. Soichiro Honda would remain president of the company right up to his retirement in 1973. After this time, he would remain as the company's director and later be appointed supreme advisor in 1983. His status was such that People magazine placed him on their 25 most intriguing people of the year list for 1980, dubbing him the Japanese Henry Ford. In retirement, Honda busied himself with work connected with the Honda Foundation. Honda's rise from humble beginnings to a powerful and influential businessman is one of 20th century's most inspirational stories. 1. Later Years Soichiro Honda and his wife both held private pilot licenses even at their advanced ages. He also liked to spend his later years skiing, hang gliding, and ballooning, and at 77, he was a highly skilled artist. Honda and Takeo Fujisawa made a pact to never force their sons to join their organization. To this end, his son, Hirotoshi Honda, would go on to found and become the CEO of Mugen Motorsports, a tuner for Honda vehicles that also created original racing vehicles. The American Society of Mechanical Engineers ASME, would establish the Soichiro Honda Medal in recognition of his great achievements in engineering in 1982. This medal is awarded to recognize outstanding achievement or significant engineering contributions in the field of personal transportation. Honda was inducted into the Automotive Hall of 
Fame near Detroit in 1989. Soichiro Honda died on the 5th of August 1991 of liver failure. He was posthumously honored with the senior third rank in the Order of Precedence and appointed a Grand Cordon of the Order of the Rising Sun. Do let us know in the comments if you were inspired by his success story. Thanks for watching.